Hi, this is Bob from the podcast Rocks, and today Ben and I are reviewing Razor X Street Lethal. This track, bleh, 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 bleh. cut this out. <laughs> frenzy, which is an absolute frenzy. One thing I love about this track is it's a call and answer solo. I think uh, these solos are one of the best solos that attract the listener and get them involved immediately. Um, it's absolutely a frenzy from top to bottom. While Palm first was leading to it, it reminded me of Exploder by Loudness back in the 80s off the Delusion album. It's a killer track from top to bottom. I wanted to know your opinion, Ben. Dude, okay. <clears throat> so, this, but, uh, you know, I'm brand new to Paul Gilbert and Racer X. You know, we've, we've talked about this. Um, jumping in, man. Um, I, I don't know, Exploder, you sent me that, that uh, album, so I need to check it out, whatever. So I can't comment on that, but I got, you know, it, it sounds kind of like a direct sequel, man, to Eruption by van halen bro and um yeah the the entire album is just you know i'm so giddy like a schoolgirl about this album dude um it rips i mean there's everything in this little intro it pulls you in and spanks you right on the bottom you know full of sweeps taps and whammy man it just absolutely shreds yeah and the guitar playing is so clean throughout this album it's absolutely amazing um Gilbert is definitely at the top of his game during this period. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And he was a kid, too. Yeah. Crazy. He was a kid. Blows me away. And then we go on the street, Lethal. And this title track is a classic Racer X song. It sets the tone for the album. And let's face it, this is one you turn to 10. And put the pedal down in the car. I mean, that's exactly what this tune is about. Yeah. Keep my feet out of hell. Mm -hmm. Is what he said in, the, in that song, man. It makes me want to jump in a friggin' car and go, dude. Yeah, just like leave smoke, leave dust. Yeah, this is, uh, I was four years old when this album came out, man. 1986, dude. It conjures... Uh, uh, the idea of a fantastic decade from what I can remember, uh, you know, I loved metal as a kid, even though I didn't know what the hell metal was, you know, I remember listening to this stuff, you know, riding with my uncle, um, dude, the solo on this is blazing freaking fast. It just, it, I mean, it just goes dude. And then we go on track three and if you're looking for a banger, this is the one. And, uh, I'm going to put a little disclaimer on here. Anyone that gets whiplash from listening to this track, we are yep. not responsible. Nope. We're not responsible. Sorry. <laughs> but this is one that you cannot move to. I can smell the jet fuel when I listen to this song. Um, the, um, the chorus riffs. Very uh, Dimebag-esque, or should I say Paul Gilbert-esque. Uh, it reminds me of uh, Cemetery Gates. Mm -hmm. um, rather, Cemetery Gates, you know, now listen to this. Cemetery Gates reminds me of this track, whatever. He does kind of the, you know, the build-up, uh, the, I, I don't know what you'd call it, you know, the, you know, he, he just, he, he builds up on his uh, whammy. Um, it, it, it's good, dude. Uh, I, I love the chorus and this. I need a time machine man to go back and jam this go to an arcade and just rip this stuff and then we go to uh blowing up the radio and this is guitars 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 um i love the talk back and the play with the little kick and the it's this is definitely an anthem track i mean mm. this is on that would bring the crowd in and get them totally immersed. This is something that was made to play live, and it definitely has that live feel in the track. 
Yeah, he's got a descending lick in it, man, that reminds me of Hot for Teacher, you know, the, the little intro to Hot for Teacher. Um, they didn't like what was being played on the radio, it seemed like. That's kind of what I could deduce from the from the words, man. They must have been playing a bunch of uh, commercial crap on the radio back then, too, still. Sure, and, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, this album has definitely uh, two big anthems. We're going to get to the second one later, but I think this is definitely one of the crowd songs and this is definitely one to get everybody involved live. Yeah. His solo was really good in this too. Um, I mean, every song has got a fantastic solo, but yeah, this one's got a really good solo in it also. Then we go into higher than fire and, uh, I love the dirty rhythm in this track. Um, this is definitely one that will, um, definitely give you that great feel and, uh, Let's face it, man, the dirty rhythm in this track, this is one you grab your partner and head to the bedroom with. <laughs> it's definitely got that great feel and that great rhythm that you can't deny. Yeah. Everybody was a badass in the 80s, it seems like. Everybody had these, you talk about anthem tracks, everybody has these just, you know, pulse pounding, you know, you can't Busted. put us. You know, mm -hmm. songs. And uh, I really like that. I really like how, you know, simple lyrics that are, you know, backed by, you know, inspiring riffs and solid songwriting, you know, can just create a good foundation for a song. Sure. And, you know, one thing that is overlooked with the band, I feel as a whole, is that it's a uh, commitment to that blues feel. Um, so many of the tracks throughout the years with the band they've definitely showed their blues roots. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then we come into on the, on the loose. And this is one of those familiar for those who aren't familiar with Razor X and you are familiar with Ron Keel or Steeler. This could be off of Ron Keel's catalog. It's got them heavy harmonies. It's got that strong presence. And uh, it definitely gives me a keel uh, sense when I hear this track. It was a uh, metal as 80s yeah. song right off the bat. They start hitting on the ride bell. It just it reminded me of a crew, of a, uh, crew song, honestly. I mean, I, I don't think that they were trying to rip anybody, but I could see this being a, a Motley Crew song. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't pick out the same influences as you do, which is like you said, you know, that's why we make a great team is because I hear something completely different, whatever. Um, maybe Van Halen vibes in it too, I would say. I, I, yeah. I get Van Halen little taste of it throughout the entire album too. I'm sh no doubt he was inspired by Eddie. Yeah, and it's definitely that on this uh, track that's not your standard Razor X song. It's definitely a stretch out for them. And I think it's a good one because with the talent that the band possessed, they could do any style that they wish. Yeah. Yeah. It, this song actually wanted, left me kind of wanting more from the song. You know, I mean, they're unfortunately slash fortunately, you know, it just depends on what mood you're in. The songs are kind of formulaic, you know, the, the structure rather. And uh, I mean, face melter of another solo, you know, like I said, there's no shortage of leads in this, <laughs> in this album. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it did leave me wanting more. And, you know, I think the placement for this track was perfect for it. I think, uh, to lead into the, what would be the end of the first side? Um, it was a perfect one to throw it in there because and looking at the other tracks, I find that that was the only place to put it, you know, as far as like even frenzy, um, to start the album with that, that was the perfect placement. That's where it needed to be. It's hard and, to uh, it's hard to structure songs accordingly. And you said the end of side A. Um, man, I want to go listen to this album on a cassette in a car in an old '80s wagon, man. So I can uh, flip that bad boy over and get ready for round two. Then we go into loud and clear. And this song fires on all cylinders. It's another great anthem. And it's one that you'll be singing again and again. The chorus is very catchy. 
It's one that yeah. will ring with you true with you over and over. Um, upon listening to it later, you know, as I did today to, before we did this review, it still catches you and grabs you and you want to be a part of it. Yeah, they let the vocal shine on this for sure. The vocal performance in this song took the taco, man. It was really, really good. Of course, you've also got really good interlude solos and is a beast. Yes. Just a beast. I don't have enough good to say about him. He's just a beast. And then we come to YRO. And yeah. This instrumental is uh basically just a jam and uh man uh, <laughs> if you haven't heard this album and you want to get a taste i suggest you go to this track right away yep agreed man start it off with this because so, uh, apparently i was reading about it yro stands for ingve ripoff <laughs> wow that was that was kind of a tongue in cheek thing that I think they did. Whatever. Now I can't I can't substantiate that, and I don't know if that's exactly what it means, but that's what it said on Wikipedia. But you know, it's funny. As a guitar player and as a songwriter, I do the same kind of, shit, and I will call a song. You know, I, I will name it something crazy that's been inspired by somebody else. So I think that's really fun that they actually included that, and you know, in a roundabout way, paid homage to Ingve for something like this. It's my favorite right. track, for sure. It's absolutely, man. It sounds way ahead of its time, also. Yeah, and you can't uh, can't deny that Gilbert was very influenced by the classical style of playing. Um, yeah. You hear a lot of the chording structures in that, and you go, mm -hmm. wow, these are all classic chords. And for a guitar player, as you are, you know, classic chords are an absolute yeah. bit to play. Yeah, and you know, it's funny, the song, the, I remember the first time I heard it, it reminded me of a video game. I was like, oh my God, it sounds like a video game. And I was like, man, I could just picture myself playing some friggin', you know, arcade in the 80s, dude. And turns out, it was actually in a video game in 2009. It was a game called Brutal Legend. Um, I, wow, you know, what, what a serendipitous, you know, outcome. That, that's great because, yeah, it's like my wife was listening to it earlier. We were jamming in the car and she said the same thing. She goes, it sounds like a video game. I was like, yeah, it does. It sounds like a soundtrack to a video game. Yeah, great track, man. I would recommend, even if you don't care to listen to the entire album, listen to this song for sure. Absolutely. And then we come on to one of my favorite tracks, Dangerous Love. Dangerous I Love. I think uh, this song has definite single potential, um, especially for its time. And I love its style. And um, it definitely has that everything that a single needs. It has that catch chorus. It definitely has yeah. a great rhythm to it and a great feel to it. And I, man, I would love to have seen this as a video. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be the '80s without a uh, an ode to God's finest creation and most dangerous creation, the woman. Man, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's kind of your quintessential uh, '80s '80s. Uh, uh, angsty women track. Yeah, and I think, uh, man, the potential as a single for a song like this, I don't know if it's a blatant attempt for a single, but it definitely would be the one I would have chose to put out there. Okay, cool. Um, then we go into Getaway. Getaway to me was the only track on the album that didn't really resonate that well with me. Um, I felt it was kind of, in a sense, when I heard it, I felt like, man, this has already been done. And I thought maybe, you know, in my opinion, I thought maybe it was one of the tracks that they didn't quite know what to do with. Um, you know, I... And listening to the album as a whole, to me, that was the only track that didn't fit where it was placed. It it, it didn't. I, I don't know if it felt out of place for me, uh, but it definitely sounded like a leopard 
song. I, I, I got leopard vibes all over it, you know. Um, it, it was, uh, I don't think they were trying to rip it off. It sounded very inspired by it. I mean, but it's 80s metal also. It's, it's quintessential 80s metal, love it or hate it, you know. Um, someone had bad luck with a woman on, on the past two tracks for sure. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I'll tell you what, though, just in listening to this song in particular, I got to say the musicians, man, uh, back then specifically, they were, you know, it's wholesome, that the music was wholesome, didn't have a lot of filler in it. It just got right to the point. And everybody was talented. Everybody could rip on on what they were doing. You know, no one put out garbage. And then we come to the last track, Rocket. And to me, this is one of the tracks I love the most because I love the, I love blues and metal mixed and uh, just turn it to 10 and give it to me heavy. And I really liked it. And I think this was a track that the vocalist shown his best skills. His best feel on this album, in my opinion, is on this track. I think this guy could sing the blues for days. You just got to rock it, man. You just yeah. fucking rock and roll, bro. Just rock and roll. I mean, let's go. Rock it. I, there's not much to say about it. It was a it was a good good wrap up to the album. I, yeah. I wanted more. I mean, the album's very short, luckily, you know. If if somebody just kind of wants to dive in and headbang a little bit, but it's I mean, it's a good it was a good uh wrap up to the album. Yeah, and I think it's uh you know, this band has been very very underrated you know the talent that has been in this band throughout the year you know not just the gilbert years but throughout is been top notch i mean the material is not strayed they've stayed true to what they believe in and what they do and this album to me is the the top of the bunch but there's so much more to explore and to be a part of and uh in my opinion this album alone is a nine out of ten okay i'll resonate with you yeah um so my final thoughts about it i wanted more um i wanted more of the album i wanted to hear more uh, i was engaged and um by the time i was just ready to just you know dig into it more it was over and i was like oh but with that being said it's got so much replay value that you could be on a road trip listening to this over and over and over and just feeling it the entire time man too abruptly um it was fun it's a fun album wholesome 80s metal just you know no nonsense man he just wanks away on the on the Fusty. guitar uh, everybody's super talented. Everybody's good. And you're right. It's a very articulate album. He is unbelievably articulate, especially for somebody that young. It makes me feel completely inept. I've been playing guitar for over 30 years, not really seriously, but song from a songwriter standpoint. And uh, Paul Gilbert has single handedly made me want to go back and relearn everything that I thought I knew and do it by the book, by the numbers. And I mean, he's just been a Big, big, big inspiration. I also would like to go back to the 80s, man, as a 40-year-old and um, really tinker with the thought of uh, 80s metal just playing without all this other that's going on in the world right now and all this other crappy music. You know, there's a lot of good music out there, but man, this Busty. was prime, dude. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, there's no doubt about it. This stuff was released in a one a We wouldn't be having the conversation of Man, this band was underrated. I think it yeah. it what came out at a different time, and this this album was out at that period. It had blown up. Yeah, it was pioneering, dude. It was unreal. I I I'm saddened that I have not gotten into it sooner. But hey, got into it in my forties. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know. And I invite everybody to listen to Gilbert's stuff with Mr. Big. I mean, the guy has not slowed down a bit, and uh, the stuff is phenomenal. Um, you know, and, you know, go see him. Um, you know, he's done tours with Bye, 
and other guitar masters, and he's proven he can stick with the very best. I forgot to give it my rating. Um, I, this is bold, and not everybody will agree with me, and I don't care. This album for me, dude, 10 of 10. It's, and I, I'm hard-pressed to give a lot of albums that, you know. I could probably ding it if I wanted to, but I'm going to just call it a good old 10 out of 10. It, it inspired me and spanked me. Cherry red on the ass, and uh, I'm I, I love it. I cannot wait to get more into it. You know, everything I've heard from Racer X is good, but this album alone, man, I've been trying to tell my brother. He loves Van Halen. I'm like, bro, dude, this is an extension of Van Halen. If you want to call it that, give it a spin, man. You'll love it, dude. Yeah, I told him, I said, you're gonna want to go buy a Mustang again and just <laughs> go down the road and jam it. Yeah, I mean, it's that good of an album, and you know. It's not very often I give a nine out of 10, but this is uh, one that uh, definitely is a marker in the realms of metal. Uh, it's one yeah. that you can refer to someone and say, hey, this defines the period, it defines the genre, and it does so in great fashion. And, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about Gilbert, but the whole band uh fires on all cylinders um oh with absolutely the man vocals uh, that are on this album you know you or i couldn't give it a nine or a ten out of ten because without that backing you know it's just gilbert and uh it, this is definitely one that shines in a lot of areas agreed Great album. Great album, dude. Absolutely. Well, thank you, my friend, for uh, picking this one. It's one that when you mentioned it, I was like, whoa, someone else knows Razor X. And, uh, yeah, man. and I was like, this is too fucking cool, you know, because, uh, you know, I've been screaming that bands like this need to get that vision and get out there and be heard because man i talk to people you know all the time and they're like oh who's that i'm like check them out you'll know who they are and you'll remember yeah. you know yeah they're a fun little stop along the highway man that i mean yeah I've, i can't say i've ever heard anybody talk about them uh throughout my tenure as a musician other than my buddy gene and um yeah most welcome most welcome Well, you have a great rest of your night, my friend. Rocked. Album from reviews. <laughs>